Hello and welcome to Grandad's Treasures. Inside this <laughs> cigar box here, we have so many beautiful bits and bobs. Let me show you and let me give you a walkthrough of all those things. Right, where do we begin? Let's begin with Grandad's wallet. And inside Grandad's wallet with this closure, we have a baseball card and we have some banknotes that are also writing spaces. There are three of those in there that took in that little pocket with the baseball card. And we have three other little pockets and three little tickets in here as well. And that closure is just lovely, really nice thing. That's Grandad's wallet. I'll just put that to one side. Then we have Grandad's jackknife or Grandad's pocket knife or pen knife. Um, and that opens, and I am absolutely delighted with this piece. It's got two eyelets here. That This one here makes the mechanism and makes that actually open, and it really tucks inside as well. That's fabulous. I love it. Uh, and gosh, where do we go now? Um, this piece here uh, is Grandad's Toy Soldier, but it's much more uh, emotive and heartfelt than that, because what began for me as the design for a toy soldier actually turned into something more as I realised that Grandad's toy soldier that he kept from when he was a boy was also tinged with his real life experiences of war. And so this toy soldier has the expression of a young boy who's been faced with that reality and the back there and these flaps here enable him to stand up which obviously you can't see on the video but he stands up properly so there he is uh, this is granddad's spectacle case and inside granddad's spectacle case obviously we can expect to find granddad's spectacles but this page also opens up to reveal a big old writing space there so that's that piece and then we have some tickets to the World Series. And we have uh, a ticket from when Grandad went to see Fats Domino. And we also have a ticket from when Grandad went to see Louis Armstrong and actually got Louis Armstrong's signature because he met him. There we are. And these are obviously also writing spaces on the back. And in here we have a snippet about cars and we have Grandad's car keys. And Grandad's car keys are actually on this key fob like this so that's a little bit of whimsy there so i'll put that to one side and what else have we got another emotive piece here we have got inside this ribbon tie we have got this beautiful lacy handkerchief which i'll show you as we open it there a really beautiful thing and inside that we have a picture of Grandad as a little boy and Grandad's mum and inside that Grandad has placed some lavender, some dried lavender and on the back this says to my mother, you too my mother read my rhymes for love of unforgotten times and you may chance to hear once more the little feet along the floor and this speaks of life and how we don't even consider, I think, that our grandparents were once children and had mummies and had little needs. So there we are. That's homage to that aspect of Grandad's life, his dearly beloved mum. And this piece here is Grandad's fob watch, Grandad's po pocket watch. And that just opens to reveal the pocket watch there. It's got beautiful closure on the front. Maybe this even belonged to Grandad's father. It's a real family heirloom piece, that one. And here we have yet another emotive piece. We have uh, this photo frame that says at the bottom, forever my love. And this is grandma. And this is grandma when she was a young woman and grandma as an older woman with a grandchild on her knee. And that says forever my love because granddad loves grandma. And you'd think that was it. But no, 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 this is a false bottom here to this uh, this cigar case. And this false bottom itself is a pocket. And inside that pocket is this folder here, which is obviously a big old writing space. And we've got some cards there as well. That's lots of fun. So that's the false bottom to Grandad's cigar case. And in the bottom of Grandad's cigar case, 
are some more bits and pieces. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, this one here um, and this piece here are really quite emotive as well. Um, Grandad was a keen gardener, so there's a packet of seeds here to honour that aspect of Grandad's life. And inside is a sunflower, and this is either Grandad or Grandad's son, I'm not quite sure. And here is Max, the dog, and they're with a giant sunflower. And this piece here is Max, uh, and he lives in this wallet along with this dog tag here that Max used to wear. So these are two pieces that pay homage to the love of our beloved pets that just don't stay around as long as we do. So that's that there. And this piece here, <laughs> Grandma doesn't like Grandad smoking. So that's why that's, that piece is in the bottom, uh, in the hidden bottom of the box. Uh, and this opens up to reveal the tobacco tin, which again, to, to reveal the tobacco, which again opens up to reveal quite a nice big writing space. This too also opens up to reveal even more writing space. <laughs> and here's the little trick on this. Here's what I love about this. If you pull this um, cigarette here, you can pull that out and it reveals a hidden tag in there. How cute and whimsical is that? So that's Grandad's tobacco tin. And lastly, and this is the reason uh, why I put a false bottom in Grandad's treasures is, oh, it's not lastly. No, we've got one more to go after this. Uh, there's a little poem here called Night. And inside this little poem, obviously this is a writing space, you have a book of matches from a restaurant. Oh, and the matches, I'll show you the matches. The matches are actually cut inside like this and obviously writing space. And along with that box of matches goes this photograph. It says, good luck, Linda Christian. And Linda Christian was an actual uh, Argentinian, uh, I think, actress. So quite what Grandad has got that in there for with this book of matches from a restaurant inside this poem called Night. Only Grandad knows about that. And that's Grandad's little secret from a life long gone. And almost finally, we have this recipe for uh, hooch. There we go, he keeps that in there. That's from long ago. And the last little piece of Grandad's treasure box in amongst all of these memories that are just bits of paper and things that have long gone and don't mean anything to anybody but Grandad and the people that Grandad loves. The very last thing in Grandad's treasure box is this little wallet which reads, Memories I have many, secrets I have few, to my beloved family I owe it all to you. And inside this little wallet <laughs> are some of the most valuable stamps in the world. So Grandad has left his family and his loved ones what equates to millions of dollars in little bits of paper. <laughs> so there we are. That's Grandad's treasures. That's Grandad's story. I hope you love it. I hope you um, come along with me and take this sometimes emotional journey throughout Grandad's treasures. So I am ready to go with phase one of this <laughs> wonderful uh, emotive creation. I'm going to talk you through the first lot of pages that we need. This is the lid of the box, doesn't need reverse printing. This is the base of the box, doesn't need reverse printing. These are two matting panels to go inside the box, don't need reverse printing. This is the false floor and a little folder for the box that doesn't need reverse printing. This is the little um, document that's going to go inside this false floor and the struts that are going to hold the false floor in place have reverse printed that one because of this back in here. I've got some little uh, papers to go inside this document and a pocket as well and I've reverse printed this one because I want these to have a backing. Okay I'm going to go ahead and cut them out finally and let's get this thing put together. Right then, here we go, ready to construct this lovely box. I'm going to start with the base. I've printed all of these pieces on 250 gram cardstock so that it'll be nice and weighty. For the base, I need one of these panels here and I need this piece. And this I have scored. Uh, I'm going to zoom in here because 
it's quite apparent on some pieces and not on others. Um, it's quite obvious on here you can fold to match the end of this white tab here. On this one the same. Fold along, there's a line there that you can just see. So crease along there. This is where it's a little bit tricky to see. Um, this one is quite apparent because you can match up with the end of this white tab. It's this one here that's tricky because there's a few lines going on. And the line you want is the very last, very faint white line where this wood panelling meets this bit of leather here. Very fine white line. That's the one you want. Right, I'll zoom out and we can get to constructing this box. This is one of the panels here. So I'm going to... Now, I did design the panel to go in after you've folded the box. If you want to stick yours in first, no great shakes. Either will work. Um, I'll, let's do mine afterwards. So to begin, I'm going to tuck over all of these four little white flaps and I'm going to glue those. And then, of course, <laughs> I'm going to let that glue go tacky. Just makes a life a lot easier because you get an instant grab. And while that's grabbing or going tacky, I'm going to have a look at the top of the box. Now, the top of the box also utilises a panel, um, but the top of the box is also cut slightly larger than the base of the box uh, because it needs to fit over the top of it. So to get rid of any discrepancies that I might have, I'm just going to go in with some heavy inking around the edge. Fine. It'll do the job that it needs to do to just lose any little white edges I might have when I come to position that there. So that's that bit done. Let's go back to this box and see this lid and see if we can stick these tabs down and have them grab. Wonderful. So I'm just forming a very basic box shape, turning it up like this so that I can just line up with these corners as we want everything to be nice and square. Lovely. And then I can apply some glue to all of these four top tabs. Yeah, I'll just let that glue do its thing. And let's go back to this lid while we're waiting for that. Now the lid is constructed in exactly the same way with one exception. So we're folding the box as we ordinarily would with the front and then this flap to come over and the same on both sides, exactly the same as this one. And the only exception is the back. We haven't got this extra fold on the back, it's just one piece. So just crease that over in one piece. And the same again, we'll apply some glue to these two little flaps here. Whoops. And we could, I guess, apply some glue to these tabs here on the end, these outer two on the sides. And also this long one on the front. And I'll let that go tacky and we'll come back to our main box, which is looking like this now. So I'm just going to now tuck in the long edges first over the top of the flaps, over the top of those little tabs. Glue that in place, do the long ones first. They may need a little persuading <laughs> and pressing to stick down. And these shorter tabs, when you fold those down, they hold the longer tabs in place. So they really help with that. If you want to get some bulldog clips along there, you can do till that glue decides to behave itself. That's fine, that's working beautifully. So there is the base of our box looking grand. And that can now have one of these pieces glued in place. I'll get my big glue for that. No need to let that go tacky because we're just asking it to sit on the bottom. We're not asking it to do any bendy things. Doesn't matter which way this goes round. I can pop that. 
that in place and there we have the base of our box. I'm going to go back to the lid now and put that together before this glue uh, completely dries on me so I can bring my tabs up and bring this long edge up and then bring this tab, <laughs> if it behaves, bring this long piece down over those two tabs checking that I've got everything, oh look at that, that's not very nice, checking that I've got everything nicely sitting at 90 degrees. I want it to be all nice and flush. So you can bring the three sides down. This glue needed a little longer as well. And when you've got your three sides stuck down like that, pop it on top of your box. It should just fit over nicely and then this piece will glue down here like this and then you have got an opening cigar box but I'm not going to do that just now we've got this panel to glue in so I'll glue that in first doesn't matter which way up it's all the same and you can centralize this because there is a little bit of a, a gap, like I say, because it's this box is slightly larger than the other one. So just centralise that one nicely like that. So there's your lid. It looks absolutely fabulous. Before we put this together, we might as well look at this false floor in Grandad's treasure box. And that is going to be constructed from these two pieces and this piece here. So I can quite happily go ahead and glue this together. This is a very basic envelope construction and doesn't really need a tutorial to go with it. So we're folding these, I lost camera there. So glue on these two tabs here, fold this sheet over to meet them and glue in place. Oh, before you actually glue down, you might like to thumb cut the bottom panel the piece without, uh, let's open this up again, uh, the piece without the tabs on, you might like to just thumb cut that little panel at the top there. It'll be hidden, but it'll be there and it might be useful. So we can line that up, make a nice cut, a little ink, because we won't be able to do that afterwards. And now I can stick this thing together. <laughs> There we go. And the reason I only wanted one thumb cut hole in there rather than two was because this is going to form the false floor. So we don't want to see it from the top. And this sheet that I haven't creased yet is going to fold in half. And that's going to live inside here with these two little sheets. Little piece is really just there because I wanted to fill the page up. I don't like leaving uh, white paper when I'm making printables. I don't want you wasting that paper. So those little pieces go in there and other things that you might like to put in. This then slides into there. And that is going to be our false floor when we get our little struts in to support the false floor, which are these here. So these have just been creased along the black lines. And there's four creases to make and five strips. So I'm going to glue now. I can choose which side I'm going to glue. I think I'm going to glue on the lighter side. This is going to fo uh, fold up to become a tube, a long square tube. Does a square tube have a name of its own? A cube, cube. <laughs> there we are. Pop that glue on. Doesn't have to be the lighter bits, you can do it on the other edge if you prefer. Gonna let that grab. And I'm gonna come back in a minute and I'll do this pocket. Now this pocket is going to go in the lid of the box that we haven't glued in yet. We need to do that, don't we?
So usual trick with this, glue your three pockets, uh, glue your three little tabs at the side. Uh, these just allow you to get a bit more stuff in the pockets, which is nice. Give that a moment to grab and I'll come back to my cigar box and this lid and all of this lid now, all of this white section, I want to glue in place. So I'll give that a minute, come back to my little cubes and I'm going to fold this section up and then I'm just going to fold two sections down. <laughs> to meet it and press that in place. So again, <laughs> bring this flap down, fold the thing in half over the top of it and glue in place. And then when you open this up, you've formed a croob, <laughs> whatever it is that's called, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, you also want to ink here. I'm going to be cross if you don't. I haven't gone to all this trouble making this beautiful kit for you to leave uh, white light, little black lines all over the place. So get your ink on. There we are. So they're done. They will sit in place quite nicely. I'm obviously going to glue them. I'm going to find my end and hide my end underneath and at the back tucked away in the corner. So I'll pop that one right in the very corner, squish it down at the back there. I should really glue this side as well, shouldn't I? So I'm gluing the bottom and the side uh, that it makes the box as well. And that will help my structure as well. So that'll be great. So I'll have to go back in and press that down a few times so it'll stick in place. Now this has had a, ta a chance to uh, go tacky. I'm going to pop my lid on at the front, pop it over the top, make sure it's all nice and flush and sitting nicely and then bring this panel down and stick that down like that. And that's it guys, that's it. That is the box complete. Like I say, I'm going to keep going back to these pieces and making sure these pieces all stick down and our false bottom with our little cards inside then fits on top of here. There we go. And that is our false bottomed cigar box. There we go. Let's move on. Oh, no, let's not move on. Let's put the blooming pocket in. <laughs> Here we go. So we're nearly finished apart from the pocket and that is just going to sit I'm going to ink this edge quite heavily, I think, so there's a bit of a, a distinction. It's already a dark shape, so we won't do a lot with it. But I think that just might help give us a little bit of definition. Pop my pocket on. Come on, pocket. <laughs> there we go. Give myself a little bit of leeway there. I don't want to come into get into problems with that. So just make sure that you've got a little bit of a gap between the bottom of that lid there and the start of the pocket there. Look at that. That is stupendously good. Really, really happy with that. I've got some inking to do. Uh, but other than that, we've got our pocket there. We've got our false bottom. And we've got these bits that need a little bit of help to grab. Fantastic. Let's move on. The next page I'm going to be working on is Grandpa's wallet. Uh, and that's this page here. If you want to reverse print, you go ahead. I haven't done. Um, I only need reverse printing for this, this and this. So I've left it. Um, I'm <laughs> beginning to embrace the idea of a little bit of white in my makes. But if you want to lose that completely, you go ahead and lose that completely. Let's cut this out. So here are my pieces cut out. Here's the wallet. Now you'll notice on your 
uh, printable. The, the wallet is slightly shaped. There's a couple of little bulges and whatnot on some of these edges. I was going to go with that because it just gives it a nice natural little shape around the edges. If you want to, do go ahead. Uh, but I became aware of all the cutting that I've got to do with my dodgy wrist. So I decided to just keep this simple on myself. So that's the wallet. These are the little bits. They're quite straightforward. They take care of themselves. I've inked those up. The baseball card I've just folded in half and glued to make this sturdy little card and I've inked it so we can put those to one side. This piece here is going to become the closure for the wallet. This piece here is going to be the strap for the closure for the wallet. So you can fold that in half with some glue on there and stick that down. Now let's get to work on the wallet. Now I want to <laughs> fold the wallet in half and then, if I get my edges all nicely lined up, that's a good start, isn't it? There we are. And then fold in half again. And because you're folding two pieces of card together, you can't help but get a little discrepancy there. So I'm just going to go over to my big trimmer and I'm going to trim all that off so that all my edges are perfectly neat. There we are. And I want to round off these uh, corners as well but I don't think my corner rounder is going to accept it you might have a nicer corner rounder than me mine's a bit uh, rubbish and I need a new one so I'm just gonna just just gonna just angle these edges just ever so slightly just to take the squareness off that shape there so there's granddad what granddad's wallet we've got granddad's closure to go on and this is the inside I've also got that shape there haven't I that I wanted to cut into Let's do that. Just to round that shape off a little bit. There we go, that will do. So I need my cutting mat now and I need a knife and I could do with a ruler. Oh, there's one over there. I don't think I'll use a ruler. It's easier to show you without one. So I've got three pockets here and I'm going to cut along the top of each of these pockets. Just one slice, not going right to the end. I don't want to cut right through, but just going a good way along, giving myself a bit of an edge and do the same at the top of all three of those little pockets. And I've got a pocket here, so I'm going to do the same thing over there. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do there. Uh, right, so here is the wallet complete. We've made our cuts and now we're going to do our gluing. I've already made a bit of a mess of mine, <laughs> but now I know exactly what I'm doing. We'll get it right for you. Okay, so you're going to put a card in this pocket here. It doesn't go that way around. It goes this way around. Okay, so that's your pocket. And then you've got a pocket at the back. Let's put one in the back first. And then you've got a middle pocket here and then you've got a pocket at the very front here. So now when you open this thing up, you can see what needs to be glued and what needs to be left open. OK, so all of this panel here behind this card can be glued. So you can glue all of this section. Get my big glue. And you want to glue around the edge of this one here and you want to glue just around the edge of this one here and then when you fold them together it'll be right I got mine right wrong the first time so that you don't have to it's a sacrifice I like to make <laughs> there we go so there's your wallet you've got your little pack your little pocket there and you've got your three little pockets that you haven't glued down. <laughs> you've got your three little pockets here, here and here to put your little bits in. Fabulous. Right. Uh, we can move on to the cover of this wallet and put the closure on. And the closure is quite simply going to glue on over here. We're going to fold it around. And this piece goes down here like this. So we can glue both of those on. We can glue the back. So 
So in the middle, at the back, glue that on and give that a time to grab. <laughs> it's said than done. There we are. Pop that on. I don't utilise bulldog clips enough. They're very, very handy. And this little tiny little flip of a section here, I'm just going to give myself a bit of an angle on those tabs at the end there. They're only tiny little pips of things. Get some glue on there. Pop this in place in the middle. Let me see exactly where it needs to be if I bring this piece out. <laughs> I'm going to let that sit out a little bit, I think. I think it will be easier to slide in if it's not right on the very edge of the wallet. Am I in shot here? There we are. So pop, <laughs> pop this in place. There. Make sure you can still get underneath it and you haven't glued it together. There we go. I'm going to glue. I'm going to leave all of that to dry now before I go trying to get that in place because I'm asking that paper to do things that it wouldn't ordinarily do. So I'm going to let that dry. Here we are. So my wallet is dry. I've got my baseball card in there. I've got my little library card. <laughs> it's a very little library card, but it needed to be to fit in Grandad's wallet. And I've got my two little tickets here that can go in here and here. I have got some money, I think, somewhere down further down the kit, but I haven't printed those out yet. So we've got our closure glued on like this, and it actually works really, really nicely. You need to curve this bit round a little bit, pop it in, and it works really nicely. Just be careful when you open it, you are dealing with paper. At the end of the day, it's not as durable as leather. So just be nice and gentle with it. And that works beautifully. There's Grandad's wallet complete. And the next page of the kit I'm going to be working on is Grandad's spectacles in this beautiful, heavily embossed old leather case. And you've got Grandad's spectacles there. This piece is a very emotive piece for later on. Uh, and I've reverse printed this with the aged paper backing, so I'll cut those out. So here we are with Grandad's glasses, Grandad's glasses case, Grandad's glasses case's little pocket that I've already glued round the rounded edge of, and this little piece here. Put this little piece safe because we will need it in a little while. I'm not going to cry now, I'll cry later. <laughs> okay, um, so let's get on with Grandad's glasses case. We've cut it out. Uh, we're going to score it into three parts. There's a faint white line for you to follow there. <laughs> My eyes are a little bit misted up because I got emotional about the piece of lavender. <laughs> You'll see. Um, right. So then we're going to fold up the glasses case like this. This piece folds down over the top and becomes the top of our glasses case. And we've got a nice big writing space in there and in the middle of that writing space round about here and we're going to pop that pocket oh was i going to pop that pocket on the outside why don't i pop that pocket on the outside there that makes more sense <laughs> yeah you can put it wherever you like uh, this glue i love let's just show you this actually because it's really cool it rubs off like an eraser it's really really good it's this, Colal, and it's alcohol-based, so it doesn't uh, wrinkle your paper, which is lovely. Right, let's go again with this pocket. Uh, yeah, you can put your pocket on the inside, or you can put your pocket on there, which is a good idea, because then I can pop my glasses in here, and I've got a writing space on the back of me glasses. And then I can also open that space up, which I've glued together, <laughs> And I've got this great big writing space. So that's a sensible use of that space. Space. There we are. There's Grandad's glasses case. And that will fit just nicely in the pocket of Grandad's little box of treasures. And of course, you know, we come from a time, uh, or our grandfathers came from a time where these things were so precious and so treasured. They were everything and they weren't disposable. And you were very, very lucky to have them. And you looked after things, you know, and you mended things. 
So it is a treasure because it's the gift of sight and Grandad really appreciates it. There, let's move on. Here's the next sheet of uh, Grandad's treasures. I'm going to go ahead and cut these out. So here are my bits, mostly cut out. I haven't cut out the toy soldier yet. I'm going to do that uh, and talk to you about it as I cut it out, I think. Uh, right, the, the jackknife. <laughs> I asked our Facebook group, the Magical Paper Pantry, um, for suggestions for this kit and I've taken some of those suggestions forwards. Thank you so much guys, it is absolutely brilliant. Um, and that birthed this idea here, which is this, I think what you call in the US a jackknife and what we call in the UK a pen knife or a pocket knife. And I'm going to make it retractable as it should be. So I'm going to take my hole punch for this one, put my watch to one side and this beautiful little toy soldier. Uh, and make my hole straight through the middle there and again straight through the middle of this rivet that you can see on both pieces of the pen knife. Oh and incidentally uh, I've cut this out using my usual technique where I cut out a little bit from this side at the top and the bottom maybe cut out a little bit from this side top and bottom and then you can fold those pieces over line them up and then cut out the rest cut everything out together and you'll know that you're lined up I'll show you with the with the toy soldier again this piece gets completely glued together so let's do that now I put lots of glue on that to make it a nice rigid piece Uh, and before I go committing to um, putting brads in here, I'm going to pop a brad in, not a brad, Emma, an eyelet. I'm going to pop an eyelet through the two pieces and I'm just going to wiggle this because I don't want, as you can see here, if I zoom in, I don't want this that you can see sticking out over the edge. So I'm going to go in and I'm just going to trim that down with my scissors. Uh, where's the base of this thing? I often get this the wrong way around. There we are. And there, <laughs> I've done it too tight. Don't squeeze too tight or you'll regret it. Oh, I regret it. I wish I hadn't squeezed them that tight. There we go. And I knew that as well. I'd already told myself that. So to finish this off, I'm going to put another eyelet through here. I'm not gluing at all on this one. So you've got a little a little rivet there. So I suggest you go through that rivet there. Put your eyelet on. Don't squeeze too hard. Actually you can squeeze harder for this one because it doesn't matter. But just don't squeeze too hard with that one. Give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. There. And there is my retractable pocket knife finished. So let's move on to the pocket watch. That's quite simple. You've got this piece here to fit over this back piece that then folds over the front and this little tab just shuts around the back. Nothing happens to that. That just stays there and it's enough to keep it in place. So there you've got the fob watch with this little writing space here. If you want to, uh, I'm not going to, but if you want to, let's take a little scrap so I can show you. You can just glue a part of this, say a third of it like this. So you've got this little flap then that you can then use to pop a little bit of secret ephemera under if you want to. So that's an option, but I'm going straight down with my big glue <laughs> and just have it as a little bit of whimsy with enough for an inscription maybe just a little bit of something written on that side there so there we are that's the watch and you can ink up just lose those raw white edges which is always a nice thing to do i feel and there you go there's grandpa's pocket watch complete and that can go in grandpa's little box popping that in the back as well oh okay that's getting quite full now at the back there lovely oh look at it it's looking so cool it's looking so good oh and these little 
tiny little treasures that we haven't yet dealt with. Right, now we come on to this piece and I want to talk about this piece as I'm cutting it, I hope, um, because I'm going to start one edge and I'll do the same down the other edge, then I'll fold them together and I'll cut out those two last bits in the middle all together, uh, really just to cut my cutting down. Um, yeah, so let's fussy cut this thing and let's talk about this. When I um, decided to put a toy soldier in, I wanted to put something in that alluded to Grandad's youth and his innocence and the joy of his boyhood and his childhood. And I thought about a toy soldier. I thought about how few toys our grandparents had when they were children and how they loved things would be homemade and so on and how they loved what they had and valued and treasured what they had. So I thought a toy soldier, just a little toy soldier, simple little tin soldier would um, would be perfect. And as I was designing it and putting this piece together, um, this guy happened. And amongst all the other options I had for the design, this is the one I went with because of his expression. And I wanted to um, talk about, because we set out uh, on this journey of um, Grandad's treasures to honour Grandad's. And I've put a lot of time and thought into Grandad's as a whole, as an essence. You know, my Grandad was a farmer. He farmed during the war. Um, so his experiences and his memories will be very different to your um grandparents' memories. So trying to honour grandparents as a whole, grandfathers as a whole, uh, really made me think very, very hard. Um, and this soldier, <laughs> um, gonna not cry here, this, this soldier, uh, to me, uh, with his expression, his very solemn, serious expression, has taken the toy soldier that Grandad had in his youth the simple joy, the innocence, and it has turned it into a very real experience. Um, and so many of our, oh gosh, here we go, so many of our grandfathers suffered and struggled and died and lost and came back and were traumatised. Um, and we can't not honour that and bear witness to that. Um, and salute them you know do our best in our very limited way in our very spoilt overprivileged um or not overprivileged maybe but privileged existences um to understand as best we can uh of what our our grandparents went through so there he is our little toy soldier so i've cut uh, both sides now and now I can fold him in half and the front the back does perfectly meet the front I designed it that way what's going on here the hat seems to be having a, a bit of a wobble all right okay so we're going to line that up as best we can and it needs to be really quite accurate at this point because we're going to cut out oh dear me <laughs> Yeah, it's a joyous thing, um, remembering our grandparents and putting these little things together. Uh, but also, you know, it gets us in the fields and so it should, absolutely so it should. Uh, so here's to grandads everywhere where this kind of reality was every day was part of their lives, was something they lived and died through. So I'm going to cut out the very last bit. I'm going to be very careful uh, around here because it's very delicate and I want to get it right. I'm going to hold on tight. That is very delicate around there. When we get it glued, it'll give it some, some strength and some rigidity. So this is one of the emotion, most emotional pieces of this kit. Uh, there are some more. 
<laughs> there are some more. There we are. That'll do just nicely. I can cut his legs out if I want to. I don't think I will, though. I think I'll I'll not chance it any more than that. I think I'll leave it like this. And now I will glue. And I'm going to glue all over. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not gluing all over at all. I'm leaving. <laughs> How am I going to show you this now? From the bottom of his feet, uh, I want to fold outwards. So I'll fold myself a flap up this way, seeing as this is where I am. And I've got glue on this side now. Uh, so, yeah, from the bottom of his feet, fold yourself a flap actually towards you. I'm only faffing it about like this now because I've got glue on the back. OK, so both of those on both sides, you need to crease those and they're not included in the gluing. So if I glue on this side now. Fold these two pieces over and line them up. <laughs> Behind the scenes, this is a lot of work making these uh, making these pieces work and fit together. Maybe I should make a video of behind the scenes. <laughs> it would be an epic Peter Jackson move over. <laughs> it would go on for a long, long time. It's a very, very slow, very long winded process. But thankfully, I'm um, an absolute uh, workaholic. I love what I do. I'm very, very lucky. And I do it for hours and hours and hours and hours. There we are. So there he is, our little tin soldier. So I'm going to fold this front piece up and fold this back piece up at the same level. So I've got an even line at the bottom there. And then this is what makes our little soldier stand up, which obviously you can't see in the video. But this is at 90 degrees to the soldier now. And our soldier actually stands up and he can fold flat. Oh dear me, and he can go and tell, <laughs> he can go and tell a very important part of Grandad's story. There. Let's move on. And now we move on to the next part of our journey with Grandpa's memories and Grandpa's treasures. Uh, and this is his tobacco tin. So go ahead and cut this out. This is going to be a great one to put together. Really looking forward to this one. So here's my tobacco tin pieces all cut out. And I've popped some glue on here to go tacky. And that glue, if we close up our tobacco tin lid, our tobacco tin base, close up our tobacco tin lid, this needs to slot in here. So let's open that out and turn that over. And that's what that whole piece looks like when it's glued together. So pop that down on there. Then you can fold up your tobacco tin lid. Then you can fold up your tobacco tin base, bring them both together like that, and then just slide them along a bit so that they're in the right place. And then let that glue do its wonderful, wonderful thing. Now, the other thing this tobacco tin has got, which I really, really love, is this little secret sliding tag. And that secret sliding tag, I've got some glue there, is going to go, it's going to slide in here and there is a white line there for you to follow with your craft knife. Now, please note that that white line isn't quite straight and it isn't quite straight because the cigarette isn't quite straight. So if you follow this slightly curved line at the top of the line rather than the middle or the bottom of the line, if you can, so that it hides, just go all the way along that line there. And then you can slide this tag in here and the curve of that cigarette should butt up pretty much perfectly with the edge <laughs> of your tobacco tin. And there you are. You've got a tobacco tin with a secret little tag that you can pull out by that cigarette. And I know that it's not a done thing anymore, smoking, but in our granddad's day, it was very much the thing to do. Gosh, when uh, our grandparents were young 
um, it was fashionable. And so you can leave this open like an entire writing space with that little tag there if you want to. Or if you want to, you could glue around the edges of this piece here and glue that piece firmly shut. And if you want to go a step further and glue that piece down as well, by all means, go ahead and do that. And then you've just got this little whimsical piece. Before we move on, uh, I've realised that uh, the back of this tin is an open box of tobacco, which <laughs> that can't possibly go in Grandad's treasure box because it's open and it'll make a right old mess. So I'll amend the design for that. So by the time you get your printable, yours will have uh, a closed box on that section rather than being open. Uh, but it still, it just works so well. Look at that. Look at that. Looks really, really good. And then opening with that little tag that's just genius even if I do say so myself brilliant what I also wanted to show you is that I've remade my knife uh, I was struggling because I'd scrozed too hard with my crocodile there and so I've remade it just with a very very light pressure just enough to give that eyelet something to grab around the back um, and it just opens like a dream it's just beautiful. It's a game changer. So nice, nice light press on that one. Go as hard as you like on this bottom one. And if you haven't got an eyelet setter, um, use a brad. By all means, use a brad. That's absolutely fine. There we are. Let's move on. So here's my next page in Grandad's Little Box of Treasures. I'm going to concern myself with these pieces for now. So I'll cut those out. So here are my pieces. I've got glue on the back of these. Here are my pieces for my little matchbook. Um, I've creased and I'm going to fold those in half. I've already applied glue so that it can be going tacky. And this piece you need to crease and fold here, here and here. You can see some faint little white lines where that needs to happen. So I can go ahead and stick that piece there and stick this piece here. And you'll see that I've got little lines on here. Uh, right, you're not going to, so you're going to cut down here, but you're not going to cut all the way down to the bottom. Let me grab a pencil or a pen, as soon as that's what I've got handy. Um, and on the line side, bring this piece up here, give yourself a little guideline, and the same on the other one. You don't have to use both of these pieces. Uh, I'll show you what's going on in a second. So draw yourself a couple of lines across there so you know where you're cutting to. That will be facing the back eventually. So uh, it doesn't matter about those. And now you've got two choices. You can either slice down here and just have one set of matches, but matchbooks actually usually have two sets of matches and I thought it might be cute to actually emulate that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, uh, first off, I'm going to show you what it looks like with one set of matches. OK, so that's what one set of matches looks like. And that looks fine. If you want to go with that, that looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to go with two sets of matches. And then I'm going to cut out every other match. Uh, so with this one, I'm going to take out every other match like that and I'm going to snip those off probably do that quite well with scissors if I treat it like this and then just snip here that'll do okay and on the other one I'm going to snip off the other matches so I'm going to remove the first one and then every other so I've only got three matches on this one. I haven't actually tried this. I just thought it would be a nice idea uh, to emulate an actual matchbook. An actual matchbook. I love matchbooks. Absolutely love them. I love the simple little design. And I'm going to do more with them, I think. Make some more kits with them. Right, so on one I've got three, on the other I've got four. So they will sit behind each other now, like that now. So you get that slightly layered look. It's an extra uh, bit of something to go to an extra length to go to to get that look uh, but I like it I like it right so we're simply going to pop this in here now in the middle grab a stapler and you can even see the two little staple lines there two little staple marks this is a vintage matchbook that I found and cleaned up so staple oh my goodness 
<laughs> a staple in there. My stapler is messing me about. Uh, but you get the idea. And that just sits under there like that. And that's your little matchbook. And you've got all these matches here. Um, now that is to sit in the bottom of Grandad's box of treasures underneath everything else because even though we don't know <laughs> who she is um, it says good luck Linda Christian and I can actually tell you that Linda Christian is an actual Argentinian actress from the 50s quite what Grandad is doing with a photograph of her that says good luck Linda Christian in his um, box of treasures along with a matchbook from a restaurant limited edition lounge that's pink like that we don't know that's part of granddad's history and that's granddad's secret to take with him so there we are they go in the bottom like that oh and what we've also got on another page that i've already cut out because i'm going to be dealing with it in a minute um is this secret recipe for hooch so that can hide away in the bottom of granddad's treasure box as well. Right, I'm going to move on to this piece now. So you need the handkerchief and you need grandma's per um <laughs> you need the handkerchief, you need this lovely photograph of Grandad with his mum, Grandad when he was a little boy, with his mum and this beautiful emotive poem and you need this little bit here and you also need something like a little bit of ribbon. So my idea here is that this photo card um, of Grandad's mum and Grandad when he was a little boy uh, with this beautiful poem on the back, which I won't read because I'll cry, <laughs> is going to nestle inside Grandma's, <laughs> Grandma, I've got Grandma's purse on the brain, is going to um, nestle inside his mother's handkerchief like this. So we're going to fold over one edge of the handkerchief and we've got mum <laughs> centred here so fold over one side fold over the other side if you want to nestle this in a different way you go ahead and then I'm simply going to bring the top down over those two folded pieces like an envelope form and I'm going to bring the top down this side as well and I'm going to wrap it with the ribbon. But before I do that, I'm going to pop this little piece of lavender. <laughs> I might get emotional here. This bit of lavender inside the card. And that's kind of a nod on a pressed flower um, that Grandad would keep in there in honour and memory of his beautiful mum. Um, because I think we forget, you know, that old people were once young people. They were children. They had mummies. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> right. OK, let's wrap this with um, this ribbon. However, I decide I'm going to do it. I might do it like a traditional postal letter. So I'll bring it in half. Twist it. Turn this piece around and tie myself a little bow in the front and of course that handkerchief uh, and the inside of the card uh, is all a writing space and this can go and live as one of granddad's most precious treasures isn't it funny when it comes down to it how our memories aren't uh, the things that are important to us our actual treasures aren't monetary things with monetary value it's these precious, precious memories of love. There we go. So that is, I love that. I really love that. That's a really nice addition to Grandad's memories. <laughs> I lost camera. So I've glued my tag together, all the body of the tag, but I've left the top of the tag open. Of the, I've left the top of the key fob open. And I've torn, not cut, torn this ring in one place turned it over, torn it in another place. OK, so then I'm going to take to both of my keys and I'm going to slide them 
through where I've torn on one side, bring this back round, just open that up a little bit, slide my keys <laughs> back through this piece here, so that the top piece and the bottom piece are now through the centre of the key. Move my keys out of the way completely, and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to glue this top ring down. And because I've torn, I've got some slightly jaggedy edges of paper, which are not only going to give me a little bit more surface area to glue, but hopefully they'll be a little more blended in because it's not a solid line that you've cut. But if you want to cut, you can cut. So that's one side fixed. I've got glue all over my fingers. I don't know how uh, the ladies that do these kinds of crafts on video can manage to have beautiful nails um, and be like all immaculate. I'm a gluey mess at this point. <laughs> and you can also pop a bit of glue over the top as well if you want to, and that will help that reinforce that little seam there that you've cut. That hasn't actually glued. Let's spend a moment on that. And of course, this glue when this is dried will give you some nice rigidity there as well. So here they are. There's Grandad's keys on Grandad's key fob. <laughs> Quite a neat little idea and a little trick of how to get two rings joining when you're making papers, when you're doing paper crafts. So there's Grandad key, Grandad's keys. They can go in Grandad's treasure box along with everything else. Oh. I've got a knife here I left out. I love that. I keep going back to that quite a lot. I've come back in the studio like late at night and gone, oh, look, there's Grandad's treasure box. And I'll go and I'll open that. And Yeah, <laughs> I'm having fun. Let's move on. OK, next up, I've got these two elements here. I've got this photo frame. I've got this photograph and I've got this photograph. But I'm going to go ahead and cut. Right. So I've got these pieces I'm going to be working on. These pieces that I've also cut out uh, are various tickets <laughs> that are really cute and lovely. And they are just going to go in the back of this pocket here, <laughs> wherever I've got room, because it's getting mighty full up in here. My little soldier's disappeared. There we go. This one can fold up. I haven't reverse printed these. Uh, like I say, I'm starting to embrace a little bit of white in journal kits now not too much uh, but I used to be very fastidious about getting rid of all the white and I'd put aged paper backings everywhere uh, but I'm starting to rethink that now and I like a little bit of white in there uh, this is getting mighty full right there we go we might have to put a, a ribbon around it um, this piece here I've cut out now this is quite an emotional piece for me um, I'm going to cut out these uh, windows here on both sides. Now you can see there's an actual frame. This is an actual vintage frame. You can see there's a line there, but if you want to take it a little bit larger, which I think is what I'm going to do because I want a bit more of these photographs showing. Okay, here are my pieces um, cut out and glued on those narrow flaps at the back there, <laughs> at the sides. So I'm just going to fold this up in a very typical kind of envelope-y kind of way to make myself this photo frame, this vintage style photo frame. And then I'm going to pop these two pictures, one in each side. And this is Grandma. <laughs> this is Grandma of Grandma's purse. And this is Grandma when she was young and very beautiful. And here is Grandma when she was older and very beautiful <laughs> with a, a, a grandson sitting on her knee and the this says uh, forever my love and it just speaks so much to me about time and the passage of time and the endurance of love now life who knows their stories here and life wasn't always easy and comfortable you know but they did it and they came through it together so there is granddad's love for his beautiful, beautiful bride and his darling wife. And of course, if you've got photographs of your grandmother, um, then please do use those photographs instead. Right, we are really getting somewhere with Grandad's treasures. We're nearly finished. Um, 
Now, I don't think I've mentioned for the last couple of little projects what cardstock I've been using and whether I've been reverse printing or not. Um, 250 gram, unless I'm otherwise stating. Uh, or you can go a bit lighter, you can go 200 gram if you want. And reverse print where you feel you need to reverse print. If you're going to see that back and you don't want that back to be white, then obviously reverse print it. This um, is to be printed on paper. Uh, because we've got this seed packet here that I want on paper and also this little bit of uh, stuff here. Uh, these pieces are left over from other pieces and they are all on card. Right, I'll cut these out. Okay, here we go on another very emotive piece. Uh, I can lose my cutting mat now. This is Max. This, oh God, I can't even get through this without welling up. This is Grandad's dog. Hang on, give me a minute. Um, this is Grandad's beloved dog and uh, I'm going to put him in a little wallet here uh, which is left over from uh, another page and I'm going to thumb cut this uh, piece just for the aesthetic so I'll line that up and I will just make myself a little thumb cut, thumb cut on one side I think I've already glued these so I can stick that down and Max, who I can't talk too much about because I'll go, <laughs> um, is going to pop in this little pocket here along with the tag. Now, the tag was two-sided, like with the keys. Uh, I've cut this out and I've also just got room for a little eyelet in there. So I've popped that in there just for a little bit of extra something. And that is going to live in this little wallet with Max. And that's going to go in Grandad's treasure box. And here we have another one because, <laughs> oh, I'm a softy, um, Max again uh, with this picture. I don't know if this is Grandad. If Max was Grandad's dog when Grandad was a little boy, then yes, this is Grandad. Uh, if Grandad had Max when he was an older uh, grown-up man, <laughs> maybe this is Grandad's son. I don't know. <laughs> These stories are... Um, up to you to run with in your own um, in your own creation of granddad's treasures and of course I'm sure you will have lots of other things to pop in there and you may even need to leave out some of these elements because goodness me it's getting full up so this is the seed packet okay the seed packet is going to have a little seam of glue over there uh, and when I put the uh, shout out on the pantry Facebook group uh, and a load of people really, really helped me with suggestions for what I should put in here. Gardening and war were the two things that seem to be prevalent in Grandad's life. And I really agree and feel that that is the two very important pieces to um, to pay homage to in this kit, uh, which has turned out to be a real labour of love uh, and something I've really, really thought quite deeply about. Um, so there we go. Here goes Grandad or Grandad's son and Max, beloved Max, um, in the <laughs> in the packet of seeds with the sunflowers on the front, which has got such a beautiful, beautiful meaning there with those beautiful, bright, tall sunflowers and how so much comes from a tiny little seed. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> There's Max. And there's two more of Grandad's beautiful memories. And we also have this piece here. Uh, this is just a little, uh, <laughs> a little piece, a little snippet from a magazine or a newspaper about the car of the future. Uh, I'm just going to fold that piece in half, I think. And I may even pop that uh, either side of Grandad's keys. So you've got a writing space there uh, and that makes that into a nice little a nice little whimsy. There we go. Before I construct the very last piece of Grandad's story, um, <laughs> I've got these banknotes here uh, that are public domain images. I know that there's uh, you, you're not to print or reproduce banknotes. Don't worry about that. But these are from the public domain, so we're okay there. And uh, they can go in Grandad's purse, Grandad's wallet. If you want them to look at me leaving the black leaving the backs white and relishing it i really like it i really like it so you've got writing spaces here in fact i do them that way around 
fold them this way around and then pop them in Grandad's purse, Grandad's wallet, and you've got some little writing spaces there. And it can go in there. That's an added little bit of something that's quite nice. And we'll fasten that up. Love that type of closure. Uh, and this is just a little letter and that's a little bit of extra journaling space to pop in maybe in, right in the very bottom. Now I hadn't intended to put so much in the bottom here <laughs> but I've had to because uh, as per usual I've given you lots and lots and lots. Don't feel you've got to use all these pieces if you don't want to. Right let's move on to the final part of Grandad's story and you will have seen from the walkthrough at the beginning of this video uh, just what this is and I really love it. Um, so I've got my stamps here and I'm going to put these into my, I'm going to line up the stamp on my, um, what do you call these, pinking shears. They're not going all the way in. I'm not making a complete um, cut. I'm not making the complete triangle. Oh, I am with this one. I haven't with the other one. Um, <laughs> this stamp is the inverted Jenny and there weren't very many of them made and they're worth an absolute fortune. Um, I can't tell you the names of these other stamps. Uh, that's a penny blue. And some of those are really, really worth an awful lot of money. This here, uh, where are we? This here is the most expensive stamp in the world. And it is worth millions of dollars. And look at it. Well, I mean, obviously, this reproduction <laughs> is very poor. <laughs> and again, these were public domain images, so... I've got no concern with the CCO license, which means that you're able to reproduce them, even for commercial uses, uh, without any problems. I'm always very careful about that. There we go. There's my stamps. Here's my envelope. I haven't uh, creased that yet, but it's paper, so that will be OK. And I was going to thumb cut. Should I thumb cut both sides or one side? I think I'll thumb cut one side of this one. I can't believe we're at the end of this project. It's been amazing and a real surprise to me. I mean, you've heard me get a bit emotional <laughs> throughout the video. Um, not even sorry about that. It, it's It's been such a journey for me, this one. And I don't know why, because Grandma's Purse didn't affect me the same way as, uh, as this one has. Uh, just the passage of time, the love, the losses, the life, the hardships, the... You know, the joys. It's been really quite a journey for me. Amazing. I didn't expect it at all. Uh, there we are. So obviously, you know, when you're making yours, feel free to um, put whatever trinkets, memories, ideas you have of your own grandfather in there. This is the final piece of Grandad's story and in this worthless little treasure box of sentiments and memories is this little poem. Memories I have many, secrets I have few. To my beloved family, I owe it all to you. And in amongst all those little slips of paper are these little slips of paper, and they are worth millions of dollars. So well done, Grandad, well done. A life well lived, and what an amazing end to a story. I really hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. I absolutely have. Like I say, it's been quite a journey for me, this one. Uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I love what I've got here. Um, and I hope you will make it and love it and treasure it and gift it. See you soon.